Good afternoon, and thank you very much for the privilege of speaking at this wonderful meeting. My name is Arthur Cummings, and I'm going to be speaking about allergenic lenticule addition for presbyopia. These are my financial disclosures, and those that have relevance are Alitex, where I was a principal investigator during the multi-center trial, and I always have to disclose that I'm on the board of directors of Alcon, and I'm going to speak a little bit about the World College of Refractive Surgery, where I'm also serving on the board. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes telling you more about the World College of Refractive Surgery and its sister company, the Visual Freedom Foundation, a charity. Why should refractive surgery become a separate specialty? Well, refractive surgery becoming a distinct specialty is not a divorce from organized general ophthalmology or organized refractive surgery. It's much more a specialization of refractive surgery, and this will greatly enhance the broader ophthalmology world. And it's basically just, just a response to the unique realities related to refractive surgery today. The explosion of clinical and surgical knowledge, the expansion from corneal to intraocular surgery, the different nature of elective medicine, and the public sphere in which our field exists. The evolution of ophthalmology as a specialty is very interesting. It happened almost 100 years ago, and it was the first surgical specialty under surgery. And initially, it was combined with ophthalmology and otolaryngology, and that only separated in 1979. Fast forward 40 years to 2019, where we asked ourselves the question, should general ophthalmology now have concern about the adequacy of training and the level of qualifications needed to become specialists in refractive surgery? We thought the answer was yes, and hence the World College of Refractive Surgery and Visual Sciences was founded. Physician education in refractive surgery is a massive undertaking. It is not just book learning, and most of this is not covered in residency, and it's a major immersive continuing education enterprise, and it never stops. Because we are working with performance and not pathology, patient demands are very different. You can have a patient who has 20-20 vision and is still unhappy, and they judge their outcome to their perceived outcome that they should have. And the rise of patient expectations gained from LASIK has spilled over into IL surgery, and people expect the same results. And very few specialties require greater care of the time on a doctor patient relationship than refractive surgery. The core competencies for an area to become a medical specialty are professionalism, patient care, procedural skills, medical knowledge, practice based learning and improvement interpersonal and communication skills and systems-based practice. Now I'll ask you, is there another field of study in more need or more qualified to become a separate medical specialty than refractive surgery? The economics are overwhelmingly positive for refractive surgery, for patients and for society. We are the agents of change and must provide physician leadership to maintain quality and refractive surgery will become the default method for vision correction. The only question is when. Refractive surgery currently resides somewhere within ophthalmology, but the required state is really that ophthalmology exists with these subspecialties emanating under the umbrella of ophthalmology. So what will it take? It will take you, physician leadership. The World College of Refractive Surgery and Visual Sciences was founded in July 2021 as a corporation. Membership opened a year ago and there are now more than 370 fellows awarded the FWCRS. There are 93 co-founders and 22 trustees from 39 countries. Our mission is to improve the human condition by preventing and eliminating refractive errors on a global basis by positioning refractive surgery as primary care for vision correction. The World College will provide board certification in refractive surgery by the World College of Refractive Surgeons. The World College will not compete with other teaching programs or teaching organizations. In fact, it will drive delegates to these meetings to acquire points towards accreditation in their studies. The Visual Freedom Foundation is a charitable public benefit corporation under the chairmanship of Osama Ibrahim, designed to bring refractive surgery to more people. The World College has a global footprint with, with six regional advisory councils under the leadership of our colleagues as seen on the screen. My academic topic today is about a novel coordinated approach to treat presbyopia, which includes tissue addition, 
less of a compromise to distance vision and a reversible procedure. The history of adding cornea to cornea is very well established. The improvements in tissue processing, optical and laser technologies and treatment planning have led to this development of predictable refractive corrections with corneal tissue. The study we participated in was prospective, a multi-center EU clinical trial with a unilateral implantation of a human corneal inlay in the non-dominant eye with an inlay 2.65 millimeters in diameter and 22 microns thick with a plus 250 add placed under a LASIK flap of 110 microns. All patients were emetropic, requiring at least a plus 175 add to read. The tissue has a one year shelf life and the instruments are used for micro manipulation. In this case on the right is a hyperopic lenticle, otherwise you couldn't see the presbyopic lenticle. The procedure is performed under a LASIK flap. The lenticle is placed within the ring in water on the light constricted pupil. While the lenticle is wet, it can remove the arm. The edges can be smoothed out. As it dries, it becomes more fixed in place and cannot move them. Once it's in place, the flap is replaced as you do with the LASIK and directly post operatively. And by the next morning, it is simply impossible to even see the lenticle. It's simply not visible on slit lamp examination. The post operative lenticle is visible on Pentacam as a central elevation and likewise on placido disc imaging. It is also visible on wavefront sensing as an increased marpic center of the pupil. But the gold standard of imaging is using anterior segment OCT. We treated 45 patients at our site and all 45 have one year data. We are now looking to see patients in January with four and five year data. Visual improvements were impressive with N12 uncorrected reading acuity preoperatively and on day one, an average of N7.7, .7, at week one, an average of N6, and at month one and continuing to improve, N5 or better. These inlays have been very quiet in the cornea. Patients have been very comfortable from the outset. They are aware of a reduced uncorrected distance visual acuity in the treated eye on day one, but this improves as time goes on and reading vision improves earlier than distance vision. Biocompatibility is excellent through three years and more. This is not pearl. This is corneal tissue from an eye bank donor. The study included plus 2.5 ads in the commercial world, which starts in January of next year. It is customizable and it can be combined with other procedures and the cost to distance vision is basically negligible. Thanks to Alitex and the EU clinical study team and primarily Lions Vision Gift and congratulations to the sites that provided such stellar results. Many thanks for your attention and I hope this is something that you consider doing in the near future.